Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop. And welcome to my second kitchen. So this kitchen in here is where I usually hold all of my baking stuff and I usually do most of my tutorials and decorating in my other main kitchen. So today I'm going to be showing you some of the things that I do to organize large amounts of baking supplies. Now I know that there's lots and lots of videos on how to organize your kitchen, but I always found that I had difficulties finding ideas for large amounts of things. So for First, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually quickly tidy up because some things are a little bit messy here. As you guys know, I just put on that frozen party for my daughter. So whenever I throw parties, it's just like a giant whirlwind of a mess. So I'm going to tidy up some things in here and then we're going to get to the specifics of my different type of kitchen organization hacks to make sure that everything is super organized and that you're able to find it. So let's get into it. One of the things that I really struggled with when I first opened up my at-home baking business was that I didn't know where things were. I had everything in one singular bin, if you can believe it. So making sure that everything has its place really, really actually helps with efficiency. And I find obviously when things are more organized, it's a lot easier to keep things clean. I'm going to show you now how I organize my edible food colorings. Now there's obviously lots of ways to do this. I find this is the best way for myself. You'll notice I have a shorter tray here and then I have my taller tray on the other side. This is because I found when I had them all together, things were just toppling all over the place. So I really like to have a taller one so that everything stays upright and same thing for the smaller one. I'm constantly grabbing my colors in and out of the cabinet so I find this way they do stay upright and I can see all of the things that I need. I have all my airbrush colors and all of my powdered food colorings on this side and on the other side I have all of my bulk food colorings. Now I do think that there is a better way to store these. If I had it my way, I would have some sort of grid system where everything fit perfectly. But the reason that I haven't done that is because I tend to buy a lot of different brands of edible food gels because some food gels do a better job than others. So if I had to stick to one brand, then that would definitely limit me and I would have to continually keep changing the sizes of my grid. So I'm just keeping it like this for now. So then that way, you know, I can store this Americolor white food coloring that I purchased. And you'll notice it is a very different shape than my Chef Master food gels. So I'm just going to keep it in these boxes for now. It works for me and it also helps to contain the mess. If you have an explosion with your food gels, then if you have them in containers like this, it's going to be a lot better and easier to clean. This particular organizer is a lot stronger than the one on the left. The one on the left though is about a quarter of the price of the one on the right. It really doesn't matter. You can purchase these type of things wherever you see fit. The one on the right is from Bed Bath & Beyond. This one here is from the dollar store. But honestly, they've both done really, really well. Sure, the one on the right feels a little bit better, but it's really up to you what type of organizer you would like. This little organization tip is really, really quick. I always put my airbrush machine into a container like this as well. The reason being when I just left it out on its own, this cord would get tangled everywhere. Honestly, everywhere. It would drag everything out. Colors would catch on it. This way I can just pick it up, take it where it needs to go, and then put it back in and it stays really contained and that cord doesn't get tangled or damaged. I store all of these items together in my cabinet. This next organization tip is probably the one that I am most proud of. Now, one of the things that you did just see me do there was empty out my container. I really like using a container to have all of my cookie cutters just go in here directly after they've been washed and dried. If you live with other people in the household, this makes things really easy. Sometimes my husband does the dishes and he doesn't want to go searching through my cookie cutter collection to try and figure out where those cookie cutters go. So I find putting them in a box really, really helps to keep things neat and tidy because I can tuck this box 
away until I'm ready to put things away like I did just now. So let's head on over to my cookie cutter collection and I'm going to explain to you how to set this up in your house. So I haven't actually seen a lot of people use this. I have seen people use pegboards before, but I really don't think the look of the pegboard goes with the modern feel of my house. So I decided to go for a slat wall instead. Now slat walls are usually actually used for gardening tools and you see them a lot in garages but I needed something fairly sturdy, something that was large and something that I could build off on. So if I ever get new cookie cutters, I can keep adding on and on to this collection. That was one of the big things that I liked about the slat wall, because as you can see right now, those hooks on there are a little bit more spread out so I can squish those together and keep adding on. And I can also keep building up my wall. I can continue adding more slat walls to it. I got this slat wall off of Wayfair, not affiliated with Wayfair at all, but I'm sure that you could find this slat wall on lots of different websites. Maybe even your Home Depot, you might be able to find it or any other type of woodworking store. You might be able to find this. The hooks and the slat wall, I will say, are an investment though. It is a little bit more expensive than your pegboard, but I think that it will hold up really, really well. I used to use boxes, I used to use baggies, I used to use a lot of different things. But what this wall does is it allows me to see all of my cookie cutters at once. And as you saw just there, I can move the hooks to wherever I want as well. So if I want to reorganize things, I can do that really, really quickly. So starting down here, I have all of my shapes, my plaques, all of my circles. I like to put all the things that I use a lot down low because I am a little lady. Then I also have all of my numbers and all of my alphabet here as well. These are all the common types of cookies that I'm usually asked to make. I also have a lot of hearts here. These are very, very popular for weddings. And as you can see, I have a lot, a lot of baby shower cutters. These were also really popular when I was making a lot of orders. As we go up here, I have a lot of animals then we get into the characters, then we get into food, and I have all these categories in my head memorized. And of course, at the very top, I have all of my Christmas cookie cutters because of course, I only need to use those once a year. This next organization tip is pretty straightforward. I just like to make sure that all of my dowels are super organized. I put all of my bubble tea straws in here. Of course, I use these for supports and I put all of my wooden dowels in another box. I just really like having things all together. You'll notice that I save my half bubble tea straws as well. This makes it really, really easy to find things. I remember when I used to put these all together and then I'd be rifling through trying to find things. You might think it's a little strange that I have a lollipop in there, but if you've watched my tutorials before, you know that I like to use lollipops inside of Simple Roses to create that support. So it goes in the support category. With this next hack here, I'm not actually done organizing it, but I've always wanted to organize it in this manner. So I just recently got into the stencil life. So I'm taking these stencils and I'm putting them into plastic slip covers and putting them into a binder. Eventually, I'm going to organize all of these into a beautiful binder, probably in alphabetical order. When I lived in my first house, I really, really struggled with pan organization and the pans would just be stacked all over the place. I'd have to lift a whole bunch of things just to get to the one pan. I love these organizers. It keeps the pans standing upright so you can just access the pans really easily and you can organize them into categories. And those little pins in there are also movable so you can make it fit whatever size pan you want. When I see a lot of organization tip videos, I tend to see a lot of things in jars like this. So this one, again, is just something that works for me. And I don't think this is any new hack of any sort, but it is a really nice way to organize your sprinkles. I hang this off of the back door of my second kitchen, and I like to make sure that I organize my sprinkles starting from the bottom to the top, going with the smallest type of sprinkles to the largest. These next few tips here aren't really super innovative. They're more just me showing you how I organize my stuff so I can access things the best I can. 
So with some drawer organizers, I make sure to have all of my measuring stuff on one side. Those ice cream scoops, I rarely use for ice cream. They're more so for measurement. I've got my paint brushes and that paint brush belongs over there. And I've got my cake tools and my cookie tools in this little spot as well. And I have all the tools that cut on this little portion here. And all of my fondant smoothing and all of my buttercream smoothing tools, they're all on this side. I used to have all of these things kind of in little drawers or bins before, and honestly, it was such a pain to be able to access everything. So I like having it nice and flat so I can see everything that I need. This next tip is something that's a little bit less specialized. I think most people would have baking ingredients. I like to keep my almond flour, my granulated sugar, and my cocoa and brown sugar down there. I keep the things that I use less of the time, like my meringue powders and chocolates on that shelf. And on that very top shelf, it's super high up there, so I keep all of the seasonal things like molasses up there. The only things I keep in large, large bins are my icing sugar and flour. In future, I'll probably make a part two to this video because I only showed you a small selection of baking supplies that I have. I did not go over all of the molds that I have and how to organize those things because I'm still working on a way that I want to organize those things in my house. So as soon as I come up with those, I will show you. Comment down below how many of you actually use recipe books. I have used these recipe books a number of times, but now I've memorized a lot of the ones that I like out of there. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can be part of the Sweetie Fam. Right now, I'm uploading daily, so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also, be sure to comment, request, or ask a question. I love hearing from you guys. Bye!